Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. My name, uh, my name is Fawad Razakzala, Market Analyst with Think Markets. I am going to be doing this uh, webinar alone. My colleague Victor, who is usually with us, uh, he is uh, not well today and so he's not going to join us. Um, but hopefully you recover and be able to join us for the Friday's webinar, uh, which is going to be on the non-farm payrolls uh, preview. Um, anyway, this webinar is obviously live, so I would appreciate if you guys ask me questions uh, during the webinar um, about any markets you guys are um, interested in, uh, be it forex, indices, commodities, uh, you name it. But um, you know, I, I I look at the majors, uh, major effects, spares. Uh, I do look at the indices, uh, commodities as well. Anyway, so hopefully there will be something uh, you know for everyone, uh, even if you don't ask any questions. Now um, let's uh, let's start. Okay, so these webinars are for general information only and are not intended to provide trading or investment advice or personal recommendations. Any information relating to past performance of an investment does not necessarily guarantee future performance. Think markets shall not be responsible for any loss that you incur, either directly or indirectly, arising from any investment based on any information in this webinar. Please remember that uh, spread betting and trading CFDs carry significant risks and may not be suitable for all investors. So uh, let's go straight to the. Um, economic calendar and uh, see what's uh, the major events coming up this week. Um, you know, Monday was all about the OPEC. They decided to uh, not change um, the uh, output hike that was previously agreed, uh, 400,000 uh, barrels per day increase. That led to um, oil prices rising to new highs for the year. Uh, Brent climbed above 80. WTI was trading uh, at around 78 or so, um, which was its highest level since 2014. Um, oil prices are adding to inflationary pressures. And because of uh, signs that the economic recovery has lost uh, some of its space, uh, people have become concerned about uh, stagflation, which is basically a period when inflation is on the rise, but the uh, economy is not really keeping up. Um, with the pace, meaning that um, it's it's not uh, you know inflation is not basically driven by economic growth but by other factors, which is normally not good because it means that uh, people's disposable incomes fall um, at the same time as uh, as, a ta as, a, as the same time as the economy deteriorates. Those concerns have um, caused uh, a big slide in technology companies. We've seen shares of Apple drop about 10% from its all-time highs. Amazon has turned negative for the year now. And uh, some of the other technology heavyweights have uh, suffered big time as well. So we'll cover the indices in a minute or so. But let's uh, have a look at the economic calendar. The um, Reserve Bank of Australia kept policy and change as, as expected overnight. Today, the um, uh, main event... Um, in terms of the macro calendar is, well, there, there are the ISM services PMI from the US. This is going to be important, not only because of the uh, fact that the uh, services is the largest sector of the US economy, but um, more to the point, um, you know, we look at the employment component of this uh, PMI report to give us an idea about how Friday's jobs report might look like. Uh, Friday job report will be out on uh, Friday at 11, uh, at one thirty. So keep uh, as well as the headline figure, um, which is expected to come in at just below sixty. So uh, a small um, slowdown from the previous reading. Um, keep an eye on the employment component and also on the prices paid component, which should give you an indication about the inflation in the services sector. Then over, um, sorry, we have a couple of um, uh, central bank speeches as well to look forward to. Uh, ECB President Lagarde speaking is going to be important at uh, 4 p.m. London time. Um, on Wednesday, the um, RBNZ rate statement uh, is going to be out. The uh, New Zealand central bank is expected to hike interest rates by 25 basis points. So um, if they do hike, um, I think that should keep... Uh, the New Zealand dollar um, supported on a relative basis, I would say, uh, but this is expected. Um, so it, a, lot, a lot depends on what the um, uh, central bank will say in the statement in, in so far as the future rates are concerned. Is this going to be a, uh, a one-off hike or a start of a series of hikes? That's what the market wants to know. Um, 
ADP uh, employment is obviously important on Thursday, or oh, sorry, on Wednesday, as it gives an indication about the official jobs report for the US. Then on Thursday, uh, there's not a lot to look forward to. You know, we have the usual jobless claims from the US, uh, Bank of Canada governor speaking uh, on fi at 5 p.m. London time on Thursday. We have German industrial production earlier in the day. Um, so a few things to look forward to on, on Friday, uh, on Thursday. But the, the big day is on Friday, obviously, because we have the US jobs report and they can the same time so those will be the key economic um uh economic data uh, releases to to look forward to this week now ahead of the jobs uh, data we have seen the dollar come back down a little bit after rallying uh, last week this is the weekly chart of the dollar index and as you can see it has been making higher highs and higher lows uh, meaning that the trend for the dollar has been positive it is now approaching a potential resistance area, uh, which is this level right here, um, a level that was previously um, tested over here. Um, and that led to a big drop to a new uh, 2021 low. However, um, as you can see from this uh, candle here, which was the low that was hit last year, there was no desire for the market to hold below last year's low. Um, which uh, caused the dollar to basically recover. And there were a couple of other occasions where the market tried to break below last year's low, but uh, on both occasions, uh, the market held its own well. And this kind of makes sense because the dollar obviously is a strong currency compared to the other currencies around the world, not least the euro. Uh, in, uh, in the eurozone, the ECB is, you know, they, they remain one of the most diverse central banks out there. Likewise, in Japan, the Bank of Japan has uh, um, has uh, has not turned hawkish whatsoever, uh, while the Federal Reserve is preparing the markets for the potential end of um, or the uh, p the slowdown of um, asset purchases before a rate hike next year, a rate or two rate hikes next year. So. Um, the Federal Reserve is getting a compar uh, comparatively more hawkish than uh, most other central banks out there. And this is why the dollar index has been climbing. But it is now approaching a key area of resistance uh, between 94.75 to 95, called at 94.75. So that 10 uh, pep range, which uh, was previously resistance and support. Let's see if we get any re reaction around that area if the dollar were to test that. Um, in, um, in the first place. The daily chart of the dollar shows that price uh, or the index rather is currently testing key support in this zone. This area was previously resistance. Um, it broke through this area and now it's kind of offered some support on the, uh, on the retest from uh, up above. So for as long as the dollar remains above this area, uh, the path of least, least resistance would be to the upside. But remember, the dollar is trading mixed, okay? So um, just because the dollar index is showing strength, it doesn't mean that um, the dollar will be rising across the board. Indeed, um, if you look at the, um, um, like a currency pair, like the dollar CAD, for example, let's, let's have a look at it. You see the dollar CAD is, is, is uh, kind of breaking lower, isn't it? Uh, and, and this is all to do with the fact that the uh, price of oil has been rising. Um, and when oil prices rise, uh, this is normally very good news for the Canadian dollar because Canada is a major oil exporter um, and oil exports make up their, uh, you know, most of their, a big portion of their GDP growth. So the fact that oil prices are rising means that Canada can charge more for its oil export and thus uh, help its GDP grow, uh, you know, relatively more. Um, so that's why the dollar CAD has been uh, struggling uh, to to hold support, whereas the dollar index has been breaking higher. So, where is this? Um, where is the weakness coming from in terms of foreign currencies? Well, one of them has been the, J the Japanese yen. Uh, Japanese yen recently broke out of this triangle pattern to the upside uh, because of the rising um, yield differential between the U.S. and Japan. So, let me show you that in, um, in this chart. I've got it somewhere around here. Uh, yeah, I think it's this one. No, it's not that. It's this one. 
if you, this is the 10 year bond yield spread between US and Japan debt, we saw a breakout in the yield in the favor of the US. So um, the reason for this, uh, from a macro point of view, is that, as, as I mentioned earlier, that the Federal Reserve is getting um, hawkish day by day in response to um, the economy uh, improving and inflation overheating. Um, whereas in Japan, uh, you know, inflation has been non-existent there for many, many years. So um, a, a bit of a uptick inflation is not going to uh, cause a major shift in monetary policy there. That's why uh, the Japanese yen uh, has underperformed against the US dollar. So fundamentally, uh, the dollar yen uh, should remain supported for as long as there's no major risk off um, that trigger, uh, you know, risk off trade in the market that triggers safe haven flows into the Japanese yen. Now, in uh, in the last three or four days, we, we did see some um, a, a sharp, a relatively sharp pullback from the highs. Um, this was in response to the stock markets coming under pressure. But uh, you know, for as long as the stock markets remain stable, I reckon the dollar yen could go a lot higher from here because of the um, growing yield differential between the U.S. and Japan um, uh, bond, bond bonds, ten-year bonds. Um, but obviously, if, if, if the stock market volatility remains high, um, then haven flows might uh, put upward pressure on the Japanese yen, causing the dollar yen to stabilize. And you might see the Japanese yen perform better against more risk-sensitive uh, currency pairs like the Aussie or the Kiwi um, and the Euro even, um, co compared to the US dollar. So. That's the dollar yen. Um, in terms of levels to watch, um, I think the next big target is last year's high at uh, 112.22, which was hit uh, at the height of the um, pandemic, or just before the pandemic uh, actually caused a big slide in the market. So that level uh, remains exposed for a potential retest at 12.22. Uh, um, in terms of downside, um, I think, you know, if, if the trend is strong, you, you should expect a two or three day pullback, which we have now got. And now it looks like the Japanese yen is probably starting to um, form a low uh, before potentially resuming higher. And um, this level here um, was previously resistance. It looks like um, it looks like uh, that level has turned into a bit of support. Um, and uh, so if, if, if we see the creation of or the formation of a um, bullish looking candle here on the daily chart, then we may well see some further follow through in the um, latter parts of this week. And um, then it all depends on economic data, obviously. Um, if jobs report from the US comes in stronger, then that should be positive and cause the dollar yen to climb to a new high. Uh, for the year and also take out the uh, previous year's high. Um, below this uh, area, I would be, I'd, I'd get a little bit uh, worried, um, you know, from a bullish point of view, because this area was previously resistance. You know, it took the dollar yen uh, several weeks to clear this resistance. Um, and uh, so there's no reason for it to then go back below um, if the trend is still bullish. So a break below this support area would thus be a bearish development in as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so th that's dollar yen. Uh, let's have a look at the other dollar pairs, starting with the euro dollar. Uh, the euro dollar is, as I mentioned, is one of the weakest currencies out there. This is the daily chart. We have uh, taken out all the levels that we had previously identified as potential targets. Uh, one level that uh, remains intact is 1495 or one, uh, uh, 15, uh, which was previously uh, resistance and the high from uh, 2020 um, or, or to, uh, the, the high from March 2020 to be specific, before that level was taken out in July of that year. That level has not been retested from up above since prices broke above, right? So 
114.95 is the next downside target for the bears and where the balls may potentially step in uh, at around uh, 114.95 um there's nothing to be um, bullish about on the euro you know despite prices coming back up for the last couple of days um the, the underlying trend is bearish price is making lower lows and lower highs okay so for that reason um i would concentrate on the downside rather than uh, looking looking for a bounce trade or what, what, what or, or to catch the bottom um in the euro dollar i think that would be risky uh, to do that against a um a, you know going against the trend uh but um you know if, if you are bullish on the euro uh it, it's be better to wait for a technical reversal pattern first so for example um if um, the euro were to break above this bearish trend line that could be the trigger but remember uh, trend line breaks can be temporary for example there was a trend break over here and that lasted for several days before the downward trend resumed so even the, if the bearish trend breaks you still have to proceed with care until we uh, price forms a clear higher high and uh, form lower lower highs as well to suggest that the trend has turned uh, bullish so um, the pound is uh, another currency pair that um, had been struggling against the US dollar. It has come back strongly. However, it is now testing a key resistance area between 136 to 136.85. 136.85 was the high from last year. We are below last year's high. So if I put um, a box around the zone between... Uh, between 136 oh, wait on. between 136 to 136.85 and we are banging the in, in, in the middle of that range now so this is where I would expect the pound to start turning lower from again if the trend is still bearish if not then um what I would look for is it would be a, a bullish break above this level. So that's the line in the sand for me at 137.51, 137.50. I, any break above that would be bullish in so far as I'm concerned because uh, we will have created a higher high above the most recent high. So that's the line in the sand. Um, otherwise, um, because we are in this uh, potential resistance area, which was previously support on several occasions, um, I would be looking uh, for the trend to turn lower from here. Okay, so so keep a very close eye on the pound. Um, and so uh, in terms of commodity dollars, um, let's start with the Aussie dollar. The Aussie dollar is um, testing resistance. Um, so if I put a trend line connecting the most recent highs, although it looks like it has broken above it, you know, um, I'm still not sure if this is a genuine break or a false break because this level right here, 72, call that 73, um, has been a key level of resistance in the past. Um, previously, this level was support. Uh, support. We broke below it, tested it, offered resistance on several occasions, and we tested it one more time yesterday, and price held below. So, I would, uh, I would proceed with a bit of care uh, at these levels because it can easily turn lower once again, even though it has broken, or well, it looks like it has broken this bearish trend line. Um, it's not really a clean chart. I mean, um, other other charts that some of the other charts that we looked at um, provided us a better uh, idea in terms of the trend. This one is not very clear, but uh, my uh, my view is that um, it's guilty in, until proven otherwise. So I would continue to look for bearish setups on on the Aussie. 
the Kiwi um, is going to uh, be in focus because of the rate decision by the um, uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand. And um, this currency pair has already reached um, the lower bound of its uh, resistance zone between this, these two ranges that I've just drawn between 69.80 to 69.90. Call that um, 70, okay? Because 70 is obviously a big run handle. So it could get there um, overnight. So it uh, needs to, uh, at the very least, break through this area before uh, we can talk about the prospects of further gains in the in the future. Um, in in uh, as far as the longer term is concerned, there is this bearish trend line, meaning that even if uh, rates were to climb above um, the the zone I've just drawn, um, the potential upside could be capped to around uh, seven, 70, 80, 5 to seventy one where we also have the 200 day moving average converging as well with price. So somewhere here is my um, objective for this currency pair if it breaks through this resistance area. Otherwise, um, like all the other dollar pairs, uh, it could resume lower and um, take out the previous lows. So the previous lows were at um, 68, uh, 68.59 and 68.05. Those are the downside targets. And um, if the trend resumes lower uh, from, from this region here. So that's a bearish scenario. Uh, the bullish scenario is if we break above the shaded resistance zone. Um, I think I covered every uh, major uh, currency pair. So let's uh, have a look at the indices and uh, starting with with the NASDAQ, because obviously the NASDAQ has been uh, quite um, volatile of late and it uh, has fallen to levels where we were previously expecting it to fall, namely below this low and this low here. So, um, on that basis, it has already kind of met our objectives um, in the short term. Uh, going forward, um, the key levels to watch, uh, I'll just draw them now on the chart for you guys. So in terms of res resistance, um, Friday's low is going to be important because uh, on Friday, as you can see, the uh, NASDAQ had created a hammer candle which should have um, which should have uh, caused the market to continue higher from there uh, when the markets open on Sunday night or Monday morning our time. Uh, however, as you can see, there was only very little follow through on the upside. And then uh, as soon as uh, the index failed to hold above the pre that hammer candle, it was always going to go to where... Uh, trap traders the stop loss orders were resting namely below friday's low because on friday it had created what looked like a bullish reversal candle but that proved to be a trap for the bulls who bought the breakout above that uh, the high of that candle. but now that we've taken out the low from friday's um, range um this level therefore at the uh, 14,550 is going to be our major um, resistance level to watch um, in terms of um, today's price action is concerned. There is no reason for the market now to go above Friday's high again because of yesterday's re reaction where we had a large bearish engulfing candle. So therefore, if it were to get anywhere close to this level again, then at that point, I would drop my bearish view on this market. So any move above uh, 14,830, is, is kind of the, the line in the sand for me. Looking at the market on the inter, intraday chart, this is the four hour, um, this is the hourly chart. You can see that um, Friday's low is being respected as we speak. We've already seen a couple of uh, bearish looking candles um, there. 
but uh, the market is also creating uh, a series of higher lows. So um, in, when it comes to trading, maybe um, if, if you don't want to sell resistance uh, and want to uh, get some confirmation, then a break below this bear bullish trend line uh, or this bear flag should be um, it, it is what you could uh, you could wait for in, in terms of trigger for a trade. Okay, um, in terms of support, you know, uh, we'll have to now zoom out a little bit to see where the next line of defense is for the bulls. Um, so what I'm going to do is first is going to I'm going to draw a trend line. Um, and the trend line is broken. Okay, um, this is the long term trend line connecting the lows from um, from the height of the pandemic in um, 2020 um, to, to this low. Uh, similar trend lines have previously broken as well. Uh, for example, this trend line, yeah? When that trend line broke down, everyone was, was calling for a massive drop. Didn't happen. The market found a base and then it starts to climb to new record highs again. So this could be a similar um, scenario here. Just because a trend line has broken, it doesn't mean that the long term trend has ended. It's an indication of the trend being becoming weak, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we will see a massive drop. We might do, but the longer term trend uh, argues against that um, mind frame because every time it looked like the market was going to collapse, um, the, the buyers have uh, stepped in um, to push the index to, to new record highs. And these are some of the uh, recent examples I can give you. Even during the height of the pandemic, when things were falling so significantly, look how insignificant it looks on, now on the chart. This just looks like a minor correction, whereas in fact, it was a massive drop, right? Um, so I would take this move down with a pinch of salt. I wouldn't. Obviously, it's bearish in the short-term outlook, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the long-term cyclical bull trend has ended. That being said, um, the path of least resistance is clearly to the downside right now because the trend, trend is broken. Support levels are being broken. So um, if you are a bullish investor, uh, I would say proceed with care, uh, wait for the right signals, and uh, be very selective with your trades. So in terms of uh, support, I think there's a level here, uh, which was previously resistance around about there. It's not going to be exact science. Um, that level may turn into support. Um, in terms of the daily chart, uh, the 200 day moving average uh, remains uh, untested. Uh, this level comes in at uh, 14,030, right? So we may see a move down to the 200-day moving average before the index creates a potential bottom. But in any case, um, only look for bullish setups when the chart has clearly formed a reversal in the bull's favor. Until that happens, I think um, you know, looking to sell into resistance makes more sense than buying the dips. Let's uh, move on and look at the S&P 500. By the way, guys, if um, you have any questions, uh, please write them down um, in, in the questions and answers box. I'll be more than happy to, to take your questions as I speak about these markets. Um, S&P 500 has likewise broken its long-term bullish trend line. It has since been creating lower lows and lower highs. Um, it has, however, slowed down in terms of, uh, in terms of its recent bearish trend. Um, this level right here is very important at um, 4,300 in that um, previously um, the selling had ended there. Uh, we've had a few occasions now where the index has dropped below this level. But so far, as you can see by the wicks of these candles, the index has held its own um, relatively well, closing back above. Still, the... Um, Part of least resistance remains to the downside. So for that reason, I would uh, proceed with care, uh, especially if you're bullish or long. Because there's still the potential uh, for the bottom to give way, uh, leading to um, a more significant drop, perhaps to the 200-day moving average um, at uh, 
4,161. Key level of resistance um, that needs to break uh, uh, in, in terms of um, a potential trend reversal is concerned is at 4,352. This level was previously support before it gave way uh, right here when the index closed below it. Since then, it has tried to rise back above, but uh, struggled to hold the uh, breakout. So any move back above on a daily closing basis at the 4,350 would be bullish in my view. Similar price action in uh, other global indices. Uh, the German DAX index has uh, got um, a few, um, more than a few technology companies in this index. So uh, there's a, a very little surprise to see the German DAX uh, struggling. Um, uh, it uh, has been making lower lows, lower highs, but uh, now it is testing a key level of support or area of support around this area here at around uh, 15,000, which is where previously the index had formed support and where we have the 200 day moving average converging as well. So this is a massive area um, that needs to um, be monitored very closely if you trade the indices. Um, if uh, we see, um, if we see a struggle to move away from here, then that would be an indication that the market wants to go lower. However, um, a quick um, recovery fr from around the 200-day moving average today or later on this week um, that pushes us back above resistance in this area here, here at around uh, 15,200, um, that would be bullish. So let's see what happens. Right now it's in no man's land. Uh, it could literally go either direction. Um, but uh, so far, the, the path of least resist resistance is to the downside. So until proven otherwise, I would still look for bearish than bullish setups. But keep in mind that the index is testing a key support area. Uh, let's look at a few commodities. I mentioned uh, crude oil um, WTI here broke out yesterday taking out this key resist, uh, resistance at uh, 76, call that 76.50 or 76, yeah, 20 maybe. So the high of the previous uh, peak was at 76.95. This area then is our key support zone to watch in the future. The OPEC decided to raise output by 400,000 barrels per day as previously agreed. Uh, there were some uh, speculation that the OPEC might decide to opt for a 800,000 barrel uh, uh, increase in output uh, owing to the big gains in energy, energy prices, not just crude oil, but, um, you know, if you look at, across the board, natural gas has been surging higher, electricity prices, et cetera, have all been going up, causing inflation um, or making inflation even worse, especially for countries uh, in emerging markets like India, where there's also... Um, in some emerging markets, there's a currency crisis. So if you look at the, um, hold on. If you look at the likes of the Turkish lira, for example, um, you know, the Turkish lira recently hit a new, um, a new uh, record low against the US dollar. The um, Indian rupee uh, has been struggling as well in recent times it has fallen sharply against the US dollar. So the US dollar has risen against the Indian rupee. India is one of the most, uh, um, one of the biggest importer of crude oil. So um, when oil prices rise, uh, it means Indians will uh, struggle. It will hit their disposable incomes and uh, hurt the economic recovery. recovery. Um, against this backdrop, there were some ex expectations that the OPEC would opt for a bigger, um, 
excuse me, um, for a bigger cut and um, sorry for a bigger hike uh, in, in crude oil uh, output uh, to the tune of eight hundred thousand. But that wasn't to be, so uh, that disappointed some short, uh, some um, bearish traders who had perhaps opened a few short positions, as you can see, uh, for example, by this bearish looking candle uh, a few days ago. Um, that disappointed the market and uh, led to a further shorter squeeze rally. Um, so right now, the oil prices continue to um, squeeze higher and the path of least resistance remains to the upside. But longer term, um, the... Um, rising inflationary and uh, stagflation and, and so on uh, is going to hurt the economic recovery. And that should uh, weigh on the uh, demand outlook for crude oil. For that reason, I, I reckon um, the, the upside could be limited from here for crude oil prices. Um, so while the trend is clearly bullish right now, I, I would be more inclined to look for bearish trades um, if and when the market kind of tips its hand at around these levels, right? So um, for example, um, if you look at the candle from the previous day, nice bullish looking candle, um, people who bought on the breakout, uh, will have undoubtedly placed some stops below the low of that candle. So 75.34 is a key level to watch for. If it breaks below that level, I think that would be uh, the turning point. Okay, so if 75.38 breaks, then you could look for, um, for a potential trend reversal. because um, there's no reason for the market now to go back below this level, given the break above this resistance zone, above the high of this candle, above this uh, area of resistance. So one of the ways to be tactically prepared to take advantage of a potential reversal is to wait for the break below a certain level like this, then look for short setups on the rounded retest. Same story with uh, Brent crude oil. It continues to trend higher. Um, it's broken 80 already. So the path of least resistance uh, remains to the upside. Um, and so far as Brent is concerned, in case you're wondering, um, I would say somewhere around here is the key support zone uh, because it was previously resistance. Um, if uh, this zone fails to hold a support uh, on the potential retest uh, at some later point in time um, and we go below the bullish trend line, then that could trigger a, short, um, a sharp sell-off. Especially um, if uh, stock market volatility remains elevated that could hurt sentiment for all types of risk assets, including crude oil. Uh, gold and silver then. Um, well, gold has um, had a few good days, but uh, still not managing to create higher highs. The most recent significant high was created at 1788 for gold. Um, it has not got to this level and today it's failed to hold its own above this short-term support area at around 1764. So gold prices struggle and it may still fall to take out the triple bottom low at 1680 at some future point in time, especially given the rising bond yields. So 150 uh, has been a key level of resistance on the US 10 year bond yields. Um, if it breaks above this, then that would be bearish for gold, I would imagine, because rising yields typically increases the opportunity cost of holding gold, an asset that pays no interest and costs money to store. Uh, cryptos, um, I don't want to jinx it, but uh, 
Bitcoin has reached um, north of uh, 50,000 for the first time in a month. But previously, it has struggled to stay above 50, most recently over here. So uh, how do you proceed? Well, if you trade Bitcoin, um, you have to be very careful at these levels um, in both directions, because obviously the fact that it struggled previously doesn't necessarily mean that it will be the same again this time, but you never know. Um, in terms of support, uh, this level right here needs to hold now. Um, so far, we, we are holding above it, um, but uh, any move below that level would indicate that the breakout, the latest breakout attempt is going to um, um, it would indicate that the latest breakout attempt um, is has failed if we move below this blue level. So for me, that would be the line in the sand. Um, other than that, um, the fact that we've broken um, we've broken out of this uh, falling wedge pattern to the upside is obviously a bullish uh, consideration, and especially in the face of uh, um, the constant crackdown uh, from China and elsewhere. Um, oh, uh, there's this trend line as well to to consider. So perhaps if you're bullish, maybe wait a little bit longer to see if it takes out this trend line before uh, looking for a trade on, on Bitcoin. Similar picture can be observed in um, some of the other cryptos, as you can see. Um, overall, I would say it's uh, directional less prices in cryptos. Um, not really trending. Um, but we have seen some green shoots of recovery. Um, and it would be really helpful for the crypto sector as a whole if Bitcoin can manage to reclaim 50 and hold there this time. I do, however, have my doubts because of the ongoing crackdowns from China and elsewhere. I can't see any questions, which means that um, the participants who had joined us are happy for this webinar to end. So let me thank you for joining us. Uh, please make sure um, for those of you who are watching a recording of this to join us live next time because that way you can ask me questions during the webinar and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, remember that we have a webinar coming up on Friday. Uh, you can re uh, register for that by going to our website, go to the live webinars section and at the bottom of the page, you can see that we have the NFP preview. We're going to add more webinars to this. So our weekly live uh, market analysis webinar is going to appear here uh, soon. Um, but the next one coming up is on uh, Friday. Uh, the date is wrong here. Sorry, guys. Uh, but this is, will be on Friday at 11.30 London time. You can register for that over here. Um, also, if you uh, are... Uh, if you go to our website, uh, go to market analysis, um, and if you go to special report section of the website, um, you can see that we put together um, uh, an outlook for 2000 um, for the rest of this this year for the last quarter of 2021. So um, here we can see we have several sections. Uh, it's a long report, so you can read which, whichever section that you guys are interested in. Um, key drivers to watch for Q4. We talk about dollar and metals and the precious metals and effects section. Uh, crude oil uh, faces key demand risks, we imagine, uh, in the latter parts of this year, uh, early next year. Um, emerging markets could um, be under pressure because of stagflation and the US dollar's strength. Uh, we also have uh, some uh, comments on the global stock markets and cryptos at the bottom of the page. So. Um, if you have time, please uh, have a read through this. Uh, I'm sure you'll find some useful information there to help you in your investing and trading. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I will speak to you guys again, uh, same time on Friday, hopefully 
when uh, Victor is uh, back. So see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.